Your home is one of the most important places in your home, but it actually might be detrimental to your health and causing harm that you didn't even realize. So yes, we all know clutter can be stressful, clutter can be annoying. In fact, 25% of people with two car garages can't even park their car in their garage. And yes, it's hard to look at, and yes, it's annoying. But more than an annoyance, clutter can actually harm your health. Clutter is defined as an overabundance of material possessions that collectively create disorderly and chaotic home environments. Basically, all of your clutter makes it messy, which makes your home feel chaotic. And all of that mess actually makes it hard for us to live our normal activities, such as cooking, cleaning, moving safely around our home, enjoying being in our home. If we haven't met before, my name is Robin. I'm a registered nurse. I am also a life and focus coach and a minimalism YouTube creator because I have seen the light and I love a reasonably minimalist home. You don't have to go minimalist, but I do suggest you do some decluttering. And let's get into why. So first, why is clutter so bad for us? What happens when we start adding more and more things to our life, more things to our home. Well, imagine that this life is your life, your window, your window to your life. And you can look out and you can be like, oh, I love it. I love my life. Look at all those things. As we start piling clutter, something starts to happen. It starts building up. Kind of hard to see out. Kind of hard to see my life right now. I can't really see my family as well. I can't feel the emotions I want to feel. I can't see as much. I can't absorb it. I can't enjoy it as much. That is how I feel. It is like living with all of this clutter in your life. You have piled things that are distracting you hugely. And why is clutter so distracting? One study showed that pilots were affected by too much visual stimuli. And that's what happens to us in our home. We are completely overstimulated. Have you ever gone to a hotel room and just been like, I like it in here. I can relax in here. There's less visual distraction. And the visual distraction of clutter increases cognitive overload and can reduce our working memory, meaning we forget what we're doing while we're doing it, or we are way slower, which means way more times walking into rooms saying, why did I come in here? The thing is, sometimes you may have started decluttering and you found it really hard. The thing about clutter is it actually is holding you down. It's actually paralyzing you. As you add more and more and more things on, it gets harder and harder to even tackle it. And the stimulus from clutter not only makes it harder to live our life, but also that stimulation makes it hard to be motivated. Meaning all of that multiple stimuli in your house, all of that stuff competes for your brain's attention, which overwhelms your brain, making it hard to do anything, including declutter. So really the cycle is just making things worse. Now I used to work in the emergency department and I would leave at the end of a very long day after dealing with people who had had the hardest day of their life. It was sad. Sometimes it was the last day of people's life and I would get home to a cluttered house a messy cluttered house. And it was so stressful, I can't even tell you. And so instead of sitting down, snuggling my family and just sort of talking about the day, debriefing, no, instead I would start cleaning. I would have to start decluttering. I would have to start trying to deal with the piles, but I couldn't deal with the piles because there was just so much. So I would end up feeling defeated and grumpy. My husband was grumpy and we would argue. The kids weren't happy. It was a whole big thing. Not to mention that the clutter puts you at way higher risk of accidents, of tripping and falling, and all of these awful things happening to you. Asthma from dust, all of that. But clutter increases stress because it increases our stress hormone of cortisol. And the thing about cortisol is that everyone's cortisol, it rises and falls each day. We wake up in the morning, our cortisol levels go up. It's kind of just like what helps us get going in the morning, but it should go down somewhat rather quickly after we start the day. Now there was a study where women were touring around their cluttered homes. Their blood work showed higher cortisol levels throughout the day, somewhat consistent without the steep slopes of relief, which basically shows that they had like a chronic stress, potentially from the clutter in their home. And all of the studies that I reference in this video, I will have linked below. There is also a correlation between depressed mood, anxiety, and neuroticism. Researcher Libby Sander argued that our physical environments significantly influence our cognition emotions and behaviors, including our relationships with others. So let's break that down for a quick second here. Cognition. So basically like how we think 
meaning we will think slower. We kind of got into that before. Emotions, it can make us grumpy. It can make us cranky. It can make us feel more anxious. And it influences our behaviors, how we're talking to others, whether or not we're exercising, even what foods we're eating. These are big things. And our relationships with others. So anybody who's ever lived with a spouse or a partner knows we can get on each other's nerves. Well, clutter makes that way harder to deal with. And all of this stress impacts everyone in the household, including children. Now the blood work inflammation marker, C-reactive protein, done on children showed an increased level if they were living in a cluttered environment. And that basically shows that that was from stress. Now another study showed that a tense or nervous mother, in addition to a cluttered environment, could result in that mother being more authoritarian in her parenting. Now, I would be remiss if I didn't address hoarding disorder. Excessive clutter is a sign of compulsive hoarding, which is remarkably common with one study showing 2.5% of people actually having this disorder. Now, just because you have clutter doesn't mean you do have hoarding disorder. I want to point that out. People with this disorder, though, are more likely to have psychological comorbidities, including OCD, inattentive ADHD, anxiety, and major depressive disorder. And we have ADHD in my family, so you might wonder what chronic stress actually does to the body. Cortisol, when it is chronically elevated, can impact your immune system. Have you ever been really stressed for a period of time, maybe a week or two, and then you got a cold or something? That could be the result of cortisol. It also makes it hard for us to fight normal viruses and your immune system is what helps you tackle things like cancer. Elevated cortisol can also impact your cardiovascular system, increasing your risk of stroke and heart attack. So you're probably like, oh my gosh, I'm overwhelmed. This is doom and gloom. I don't know, what am I gonna do? Here's the thing. First and foremost, you should always keep your primary care physician or your nurse practitioner in the loop. There is no shame in any of these disorders or health conditions, but you have the opportunity to change your life no matter what stage you're at. Improving your environment will make it more enjoyable to live your life, probably improve your health. So I suggest, if you haven't already, make an appointment with your doc or your nurse practitioner and let them know what's going on. The other thing is therapy, psychologists can be hugely helpful. Talking these things out, exploring maybe where the, what the root cause of this is. Even if you have the other comorbidities we talked about, there still can be things that impact us. Maybe from childhood, perhaps you had a parent or grandparent who grew up during the depression and they really were not a fan of decluttering things. Or you grew up in a messy environment or a super sterile environment. It could be many things. Those are just a few examples. And how do you start decluttering? Well, you can make a huge difference in your life and your family's life today by starting small. In 2011, neuroscience researchers using fMRI and other measurements found that clearing the clutter from your home and your work environment could actually improve your focus. And I bet that really improved your overall well-being as well. James Clear says, by changing your surroundings, you can place a hurdle in the way of bad behaviors and remove the barriers to good ones, which I love. I like to refer to the strategy as environmental design. And I love this because this is like, if you clean your environment, if you get it decluttered, if you have it set up so everything has a place and a place for everything, that you will actually have a tighter environment which makes doing everything in life easier. It makes making cupcakes easier. It makes playing with your kids easier. It makes playing with your grandkids easier. It just makes everything easier. I always suggest starting small. Start with just one drawer, one small place. I like to suggest people start with the junk drawer because that is usually a pretty quick win. Ask yourself these questions. Does this serve me? Do I use this? Does this add value to my life? And would I buy this again? Because if the answer is no, then you probably could let it go. And as you go through that process more and more, which makes it easier to tackle your house, another thing you should do is write down why you want to declutter. Maybe you're going to say, for my health, for my mental health, because it'll make me feel better for a number of reasons. Write that down, 
put it in a prominent spot, and then just chip away at it every day. And if you are looking for more inspiration, in this video here, it will tell you how to start, how to continue, and all about minimalism. And thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye!